Hello, um, thank you for coming to this talk. My name is Julian Larrauri. I'm the head of production of Bewater Studios and the line producer of, of the show Treasure Trekkers. I'm here to tell you about one of the most interesting challenges that I have faced in my entire career. I have worked during the last 20 years in several shows uh, and movies, like from flash TV series to CGI blockbuster like Wonder Park. I have developed uh, movies ideas from John Lasseter and TV shows for Disney, but the challenge of this show was really, really special. A client, someone outside from the animation industry, came to be water telling us that he wanted to produce a TV series for kids. Um, that's something normal. But then he explained us what kind of show he was thinking. He didn't want a show with 52 episodes. He, want, he wanted 52 mini feature films. Each of them should have the quality of a film in animation terms, lighting, and look depth. He wanted characters with real fur, um, but he also wanted a completely new world in each episode. So we tried to explain to him uh, that TV series have around five, ten locations, but for the whole series, that usually we don't have more than five characters, or maybe ten characters, but he wanted something really special. The production budget was good, but the task asks seemed impossible. Uh, I think he didn't even know what he was asking us to do. But here, the name of our company is Big Water, so we thought, uh, Big Water, my friend, uh, better to be shapeless and flow like water. And after two years of developing, and after a lot of hard work and suffering, we got this. Aren't those cool? The greatest trekkers ever. Well, maybe our pictures will be there one day. Only the bravest, smartest, and most skilled have that honor. Smart and skilled like Mac. And brave like Mo. Then what am I? You're Mip. Yes, but what is a Mip, really? <laughs> <laughs> You're funny, Mip. Funny? <gasps> we have a mission. Let's go. It's Trekker time! All around the world, hidden in the most unexpected places, there are wonderful treasures. Super creepy. You Trekkers must face unknown dangers and mysteries to protect them. We're up against sheep? Is this a joke? It's a race against time. Come on, guys. Let's go. Get ready for a great adventure. <laughs> Disturb the guardian of the palace. Technically, it's a temple. Just saying. And I have the perfect device for that. No, no, no. Aha! Ta da! <laughs> oh, what a tragic end for the triggers! Someone will find us in a thousand years, dried up like apricots. <laughs> Strawberries! <laughs> to do it over there. Okay, I confess, I am a fruit bat. You braved a tornado to save my pony. Thank you, Trekkers. Thank you for making me understand that being tall or short doesn't matter. It's how you feel inside. Respect. Well done, Trekkers. The Mousai tribe are delighted. I'd say this calls for a celebration with my clan. What clan? The Trekker clan. So, at the end, we had characters with four, a future film quality. It's not Pixar, but it's like a future film qu 
quality and a completely new world in, in each episode. Uh, we have created at the end more than 300 sets, so in each episode the characters went to a different place, so once they went to the India, another ones to China, another ones to Transylvania, to the North Pole, they went even to the moon, and, and we create the different backgrounds, the different locations on, on each of those worlds. So it was a, a really huge amount of environments to create. But the big question is, how did we make it possible? Let me give you a little clue. That's it. Uh, this talk is about the use of Unity as a key part of our pipeline to make possible the production of, of Treasure Trekkers. Uh, but before continuing, let me uh, go back to the cover image of this presentation. It's actually, this is one of, of the frames of, it's a real frame of or so. Um, and to try to explain why we think this is so cool and why we are so proud of this, uh, uh, I can say that it has mainly two layers. The first one is with the characters that are rendered in Maya, uh, with Arnold, sorry, and it took around 30 minutes uh, to make them in HD. And the second layer is done completely uh, in Unity, and it takes us around one second to render it in 4K. So that, it, that is the basic idea of also um, mixing these two kind of, of renders. From a long time ago, we were developing some projects uh, with the idea of spending less in rendering and reduce the overall cost, so that, that way we can be more competitive. Our first, our first tries were with the Autodesk Maya viewport, and we do some little things like commercials, like web series, and um, some trailers, and then in 2014, the Soul Safari came to our hands, and to make it possible, we decided to go for a real-time engine in collaboration with Digital Dimension, knowing that in this show, all the action happens just in one environment, the jungle, we thought that it was a really good opportunity to make some experiments and, and try the real engine, the, the, sorry, the real-time engine. And the result was really, really good for us. Is uh, the easy creation of the backgrounds, seeing that you are creating something, and you see the lighting, the final result in the same moment that you create the environment was really cool. Uh, the director has the opportunity to give feedback in any moment to to the show, and that was a really, really good experience. And of course, all the render of this show was one, two seconds per frame. So real-time real render was a really good option for our show, uh, but we are still having the problem of the four, of the four and the movie quality that the client was demanding to us. So we start thinking, how can we deliver high-quality image, but with a real-time render? So then our experience came to our memory in 2013. Big Water Studios uh, was producing a Christmas TV movie, Pinocchio. The production was done with a mix of live action sets uh, with CG characters on top of the plates, perfectly integrated with realistic lighting. So we thought, why if we do the same with Treasure Trekkers? We can take the Unity renders as a plate and we render in Arnold the characters using the same technique. As a creative producer, I always think, what is important for the audience in your shot? If you want that uh, quality feeling, you have to put all your efforts into the characters. That is where the eye of the audience will go first. And creating hundreds of locations will give you also a feel of visual richness. So it's like taking the best uh, of both worlds, the quality of a traditional render and the versatility of a real-time render. But to make this work, the important issue here was the integration uh, of the characters and the background. So how we did it, we used the HDRI done in the set, like in a real uh, live, like a live, live action movie. We take the HD from, from Unity, we use the background's geometry to calculate the contacts, the shadows, and the indirect illumination. And with the good hands of a lighting team and a compo team, we make the integration and we got this little test. Here we were seeing how the integration was working. 
So the characters are made in Maya, and all the backgrounds are made in Unity. Now we are going to enter in the Unity background to see how, how it's wor working. So in this test, we check that we have the ambient occlusion, volumetric, light bouncing, soft shadows, reflections. We can put any light in the moment that we want, and it's the final look of the, of the picture. Like here. So for, for us, that we come from the animation industry, this is magic that you are creating your environment and you are lighting it at the same time. So, so this is really cool uh, for us. And here we can see um, some videos that shows the different steps from the animatic to the final look. So usually you go from the storyboard to layout. And usually in animation, you go then to animation and then to low to lighting. In this case, we're able to do the lighting of the backgrounds from the very beginning. So it's having your final result the first day. Then you make the animation and then you make the, of course, the lighting of the characters. You mix both renders at the end. In this case, the, the effects are, were made in Houdini. And again, in the final step, we put all together. So from layout, we, are, we move directly to, we made the environment, and at the same time, we made the lighting of that environment. final shot. Um, but hey, let's get down to business. What features do we use from Unity to make this possible? First, um, for us, creating easily locations and assets with lighting and post processes included. Maybe in video games this is something that people are used to this, but for animation this is a dream come true. Um, usually, we always have to say to the director when he's, he has to approve an environment, we have to say, hey, use your imagination. You have here this environment. You have to approve how it is it. And then in the future, we will say it with the final lighting, and then you will approve the lighting. But now you have to approve the asset. Here, he can approve everything, seeing the final result. So at the same time you are creating the environment, you are creating the lighting. For us, that's, that's something completely new. And we have it even before starting the animation. Something similar happened with the set dressing. So we make all the set dressing with real cameras. Here on the, on the right, we have like the actual frame that we are having in the, in, in the shot. And, and you know how it's going to be the final shot. And you can change your environment to make it nicer. So usually in animation, you have like a moment that you say, OK, you, we have to lock the layout, from here we, we can't allow any changes. But with Unity, because you are making the final environment from the beginning, you can change it in any stage of the production. So it's really, really versatile. And you can adapt of the actual cinematography of the, of the show. Um, we also make. This is an internal tool that we made inside Unity. So we put the layout, the layout characters. We put it in gray on purpose, so that way everybody will focus in the environment. But this is a really good reference for the director to see, OK, this is the shot that I have to approve. This is the environment I have to approve. So the characters are going to move from here from there. So this was a really good reference for him to, to change whatever he wants in the, in the, in the um, environment. Then also we have the timeline. So that's final shot with continuity. Uh, so the cool stuff of this is that you can check that little palm tree that is 
There you can click enter inside that shot, inside of that asset, and change the color or change the, the side or whatever, and then you go back and you see the other shot, so you, you can see how that, how that change is affecting to, the, to all the shots. So you are playing with the general view, where you see the continuity, when you see the narrative, and you're also playing with the, the little, little detail of that little asset that it's in the, in the more first part of the, of the screen. Um, so let's watch now a video to have a reference of how we are producing the environment, so all, all the future that I have explained to see it in action. You can check the lighting of the set very quick and everything works in real time. I insist for us this is a dream come true. And render times. This gives us more efficient workflow and the possibility of rendering 4K or even in 8K. 8K. We have the final shot and we, see, we are changing the environment at the same time that we are seeing the final result. Of course, working with two renders at the same time implies a pipeline a little bit special. Here we have a really simplified version of a traditional pipeline uh, in animation where you need to finish one task before starting the next one. The Big Water real time pipeline um, was a little bit different. Um, the key here was the Unity environments. So that's the core of our production. So you start the traditional way with the script, with the animatic. Then when you do the modeling, all the assets go to textures to make the rigging, but also goes to, to Unity. So we can work in, in the three departments in parallel. Then we go to layout. Layout, they put the final cameras, cameras, and then they send back the camera so we can go back and forth and, and do all the retakes that we want because we have the final framing and we can change the environment in, with that final framing. So here there is no point of not return. You can change the complete environment in any moment. Then we continue in animations. Of, of course, you have the environment with the final lighting even before starting the animation. The animation we can say that, in animation we always say that in layout, from script to layout, you are spending really little money, but then from layout till the end is where you are spending all your money. So make sure that you have your final show uh, completely defining in the layout. Thanks to Unity, here that changed, so you can do all the tests that you want, because the animation that you need a lot of people, they don't really care what you're doing with the environments. Of course, the lighting of the characters depends of the, on, on the animation, but with Unity, you have it ready from the beginning. So then the lighting team, they use the HDRI of Unity and they take the, the frames and 
with the compo team they make the the final the final look. So to to make this possible, we develop some internal tools to track this complete pipeline. We create our own production tool that allows us to follow each asset and each shot of the production. So here, for example, we have um, we have two categories in this production manager: is uh, assets and shots. So here in assets, we can travel really easily beyond all the different departments. So we have from concept to modeling to texturing, we, have, we can put comments, we, uh, you see the data and the general info. But the tool is perfectly integrated with the production, so that allows us to check the different material with the tool without entering in any program. So the director or the, or the CG supervisor, they can check the, the asset without entering in Maya thanks to Marmoset that is integrated in our, in our program. So from the platform, they can check it and put the comments that they th think are necessary. And because we are having the assets in Unity and also in Maya, having all the comments in a place that is not one or the other, it was also a, a good idea. Then we have also the episodes view. So here we can enter in a, any of the episodes. And when you enter there, we have that this that we call the brick wall. Um, because at the beginning, everything is orange. And it only turns green when the shots start to get approved. So you can enter in, in any of these shots. But to be honest, the artists always prefer this other view, that it's the the thumbnail, so each of the, these that little squares are the shots of the production, and here they can see the completely episode like in a color script, like in an, in an interactive color script, so it's changing every time someone changes something, and it's more visual and, and useful. When you enter in, in any shot, you can see that shot uh, with the tile. So here we see all the stages. This is the final stage, but you can travel all along the all the process and see the the different. This is like the final look of the environment. We can see also the layout, the animation, so all the stages in just some clicks. And we can travel to the next shot, to the previous shot. We have also a sequence view, so we, we see all the sequence in, with continuity. So let's talk now a little bit about the pros and cons. Uh, I think most of them has already appeared, but I would like to resume them in just one slide. So of course, the render time is incredibly fast. With one computer, we can render the whole episode in four key. Fast environment creation, uh, as easy as that, user friendly. Uh, a lot of the, more or less, uh, the ten percent of the artists are of the artists of our company. They knew how to use Unity. The other ones come directly from Maya, so, and they learn really fast how to how to manage the program and do the what they are used to doing in Maya, doing in in Unity. The importation and exportation was really, really, really easy. We use FBX and Alembics to, to communicate between Maya and, and Unity, and it works really good. The final look without rendering, so that's, I insist, in animation, this is something completely new. Uh, so the director can send any feedback to, to the artist at the same moment that they create something, he can see it and he can change anything, and you see the final look of your of your frame in the exact moment that you make it. So that gives us a really fast reaction with the retakes and make it everything easier. You can have a lot of parallel process, so you can model texture and set resin at the same time. You make the layout and you can 
change a lot of things in the environment. So it's not like in the traditional animation pipeline that when you finish one stage, it's locked and you can go back. Here you can work in parallel. You have the layout over the final background, as, as I can I have shown you before. Uh, so that gives you the final frame, the, the narrative intention, so you can change the lighting knowing what is the story in that shot. And of course, uh, Be Under the Unity Umbrella gives you a huge artist community and also a huge asset store and tools store, so things are much easier because, hey, you don't have to invent anything, just go to internet, make some clicks, and you find solution of things that, that you don't know. In the cons, the hybrid pipeline, especially at the beginning for us, was a little nightmare because working in, do, in two pipelines in parallel, sometimes it's a little bit crazy because if you change something in one of the pipelines and you don't change it in the other one, when you finish all the process, suddenly you discover that, hey, someone has not uh, updated his file or whatever and, and the floor is here instead of here or we have a tree in front of the camera. So we needed to create a protocol of if you change something in this, uh, in this, just don't forget to change it in the other place because if not, we're going to have problems at the end. Um, the global illumination, the ambient occlusion, soft shadows, final gathering, reflection, motion blur, not in the level of a standard render engine. I think that's pretty obvious, no? You have 30 minutes to render something, of course the quality is gonna be uh, much better. And sometimes uh, um, the real-time lights are not accurate. Not always, but it's true that sometimes it's not accurate enough. But to talk a little bit about a super, a super pro, we can say, it's that um, I call it this the production energy. If you want to put instead of energy, production money, projection efforts, production time. I just draw some bars with no real calculation of numbers, but showing what is the typical uh, use of the time of the force of the people in, in animation um, film or animation show. Probably here the animation bar needs to be a little bit higher, but as to summarize, we can say that Usually all the force goes to the post-production and to the animation teams. Thanks to having these two renders and working with Unity, we put less efforts in all the post-production and all the creation of the environment, and that allows us to put more efforts in the layout and in the animation. That means giving more power to the narrative or for so. At the end, you can have really beautiful images. You can say, hey, this is a show completely done by Unity or whatever, but the kid that is watching the show doesn't really care about all this stuff. Uh, and what is really important is to, to hook them, no? to hook the, the audience. Um, and that is with the narrative and with the emotion. So giving layout and animation, that power is the key uh, to hook your audience. So we put the technology to achieve this goal. To finish, uh, let me share with you a trailer that is hot of the press. So we finished last week, and it shows clearly the cinematographic quality and that we were looking at and the big amount of locations that we, that we made.
I think we have take here the, the best of both worlds, the quality of a traditional render and the versatility of a real-time render. Um, I really feel very lucky for being part of, of this project. Uh, I feel like I have taken a train to the future and I have seen the way the animation show is going to be done in, in, a, in some years and just seeing some of the cool stuff in, in this event, I think that is going to come earlier than, than expected. I really think real-time render is the, f is the next thing in animation. Indeed, we are now standing, starting a new show with a really important Hollywood studio, and we are betting to do it now 100% Unity. Some of the things that we were not able to do it in Threshold Tracker, now, I think now we have the technology to do it, and we are going for it. So thank you very much for your listening, and see you in real time.